Hi everyone and welcome to another Intro to Signal Analysis video. The topic of today's video is a very brief introduction to the frequency response of continuous LTI systems. So the frequency response is, we typically call it h of omega. It's a function of frequency and h of omega tells us how a linear time invariant system or LTI system responds to a complex exponential input. So that's a lot of words there, but let's see what, what I mean by that. What I mean is that if we put in a signal that is a complex exponential, so it's e to the j omega zero t for all time, okay, so from minus infinity to plus infinity for all time, if I put that into an LTI system that has frequency response h of omega, then I will get out um, e to the j omega naught t for all time, but now it's been scaled by a complex number. It's been scaled by a complex number, and that complex number is the frequency response at the frequency of the input signal. So h of omega zero is just a complex number that tells us how um, the input um, e to the j omega zero t gets scaled. Okay, so if by chance this complex number is zero, um, then um, the system essentially scales the input so that nothing comes out. One could imagine that would be useful if you were trying to get rid of the signal, like you're trying to get rid of a sound that you don't want in your audio signal. Um, maybe you want a particular um, signal to get louder, so then you would have to have h of omega zero be a very large number that would be very large in magnitude. Okay, so um, h of omega simply tells us how a system will scale a complex exponential input. So it's a function, it, h of omega is a function of frequency, um, and it, it's a complex function of frequency, so it has both a magnitude and a phase. So we know that h of omega is complex and so it has we could plot the magnitude of that complex function and we could plot the phase this is my sig symbol for phase of that complex function okay so now, for an important subset of LTI systems, specifically real systems, more on that in a second, the frequency response will also give us the response to a sinusoidal input. So it will tell us what happens when we put in cosine omega zero t for all t um, into an LTI system. What we will get out is a cosine that has been scaled by the magnitude and shifted um, by the phase response at that particular frequency. Okay, um, and this, uh, this works for real systems, and one way to, um, that we could see if the system is real is we could check if the differential equation describing the system has real coefficients. There are some other checks that we'll talk more about um, in future weeks and in future semesters, um, but that's a basic uh, definition of a real system. So let's see an example. All right, so in this example, uh, we've been given the frequency response. We're told that the frequency response of this system is 1 plus j omega over 1,000, and it's for a real LTI system. And we want to find the output, y of t, when the input is a cosine, cosine 1,000 t, for all time. Again, it's important that these signals um, last over all time um, for this particular calculation. Okay, so based on... The discussion on the previous um, the previous page, um, we can easily write the equation um, for uh, the output of this uh, system. So we know it's going to be the magnitude evaluated at the frequency of the input. So it's h of a thousand cosine one thousand t plus the phase evaluated at a thousand. Okay, so all we have to do is find the magnitude h of a thousand and the phase at a thousand. So let's write the complex number. 
So h of 1,000, I'm just plugging in for omega. It's equal to 1 plus j times 1,000, because I'm plugging in 1,000 for omega, over 1,000. Or that reduces simply to 1 plus j for this example. Okay, so that reduced nicely for this case. And we're just left with a complex number that we now have to find the magnitude and the phase of. So we can do that. We're well experienced with complex numbers by now. So the magnitude of this complex number, well, we find the magnitude by taking the square root of the square of the, um, the real part plus the square of the imaginary part. So that'll be 1 squared plus 1 squared. That'll be square root of 2. And the phase at 1,000 will be the arctan of the imaginary part, which is 1, over the real part, which is 1. So the arctan of 1 over 1 is going to be pi over 4. So now we have our final answer. We can easily write our final answer. Um, I'll write it up here. change pen color here for a second. So we'll just fill it in. It'll be square root of 2 cosine 1,000 t plus pi over 4. That is our final answer for the output signal y of t of this system. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, all we had to do was evaluate the frequency response at the frequency of the input. We had to find the magnitude of that frequency response, and we had to find the phase of that frequency response. And then we could easily write what the output signal is equal to. Again, this works for infinite length cosine waves, um, and assuming that we have a real linear time invariant system. Okay, so that concludes our video for today. It was made for the ECE 201 course at George Mason University. If you want more information about Mason, the Volgeno School of Engineering, our ECE department, or me, you can check out these websites. Thanks for listening.